Welcome to video two of this five part series of our live workshop with one of Mixpanel's leading experts, Mervine Pandu. Now, quick recap of video one. Mervine first walked us through the analytics framework where we mapped out uh, our entire tracking plan across the funnel. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to install the Mixpanel SDK on your framework site so that you can pull the data tracked into Mixpanel. There's a little bit of troubleshooting that we had to do to get it all working, especially when dealing with framers custom code settings. So I really hope that this helps anyone that's trying to achieve something similar. Just before we get started, my name is Omar Farouk, designer turned startup founder. And in this channel, I share my journey building tech startups and trying my best to achieve a breakthrough growth. So if you're interested in all of this stuff, then smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Now let's jump into video two, installing the Mixpanel SDK on your framer site. Once you have your tracking plan with your list of events, it, you then go into the actual implementation where you would install the SDK and uh, implement the code. So that's what we'll go on to next. Um, again, I just want to quickly ask you to define what, what an SDK is for those people who are not familiar. Absolutely. So the software uh, SDK stands for um, Software Development Kit. Essentially, it's a bit of code that you install in your in the header of your web page. Once you install that bit of code, this technically installs Mixpanel. Then you, this code is then able to convert essentially the action of the user doing a click into a data point that gets sent to the Mixpanel API, gets ingested as an event, that allows you to do analysis within the Mixpanel reports. So the SDK essentially is just the installation or the bit of code that you would install onto the website to be able to run Mixpanel. Brilliant, appreciate that, Merv. Um, you, I can see you got a snapshot of frame over here, and I think this is what's going to be very relevant to our audience. Of course, those of you guys are watching, primarily are building on Framer, um, and so and for this use case, especially we're using this as mentioned in the beginning of this session. We are a Blitzed site is built on Framer, so we're, so yeah, we're, we're really interesting to see how this is uh, how how this is set up on Framer. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the implementation instructions have been tailored to Framer, so I'll be able to tell you exactly where to essentially add the code within your Framer website. So the first step is to install Mixpanel or install the Mixpanel SDK. In order, in order to do that, you would just need to copy this uh, bit of code within the script tag into the custom code section um, of your Framer website. So within Framer, when you go into your site settings and onto home, there is a section for custom code. And all you need to do is copy the code I've shared there and paste that into custom code. Essentially, that's how easy it is to install Mixpanel within uh, your Framer website. What this will do is this will inject the Mixpanel SDK within the header of each page that you have within your website. So we're on Framer. Um... I'm assuming we have to go to our site settings. So I'm going to go ahead and click site settings, top right hand corner. Yep. And we'll go to general settings, as I believe that's where we've got to paste the code. I think something that people often do, and I think this is a common issue within the framer community as well, is that oftentimes they end up pasting codes on um, specific pages. So if you go to the page set, and, and that's an issue, like when you go to actual page settings, you're automatically transferred over to home. and I. From my understanding, if you paste codes on exclusive pages, and I don't think it actually uh, transfers the functionality across the, like site-wide, if I'm not mistaken, because I know that's, that's an issue that people have faced before. So do make sure you are pasting it in general site settings, which means that any codes you paste in here goes site-wide. Um, is that something that you understood as uh, Merv on your side? Correct. So once you paste it on the custom code, this would be implemented site-wide. And yeah. um, you would just need to add additional tracking code on the button within each page. But right. what you've just done here injects that code within the header of each single page that you have. Brilliant. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that now. So we've got, is it this code over here? Uh, yep, copy the whole thing in between the script tags. Perfect. Um, Gonna copy. Here we go. Um, is that going on the start of the head tag or the end of the head? Where is where's this going exactly? So just below start of the head tag. Uh, so we've got a uh, meta pixel code for ads. Um, always quite yep. 
I get really uh, nervous and a bit like scared when I paste codes in these sections just because I don't want to break any other functionality, but I think that's just a natural tendency that I have. Um, we pasted it there. It looks looks fine. It looks happy good. With that? Uh, yep, it looks good. Great. So now that we've installed the SDK, the next step is to actually set your project token. So your project token is that is what tells Mixpanel which project the data or the event should go into. And in order to get your project token, what we'll be doing is going to your Mixpanel project, uh, click on the settings icon under project settings, you'll be able to see your project token. We'll copy that token and go back to our custom code. Within our custom code, there is a Mixpanel project token line. And there we'll just update the value with the project token within the quotes, as you can see on the screen here. Let me zoom in so yeah. it's very clear. Looks pretty straightforward. So we're just replacing that token, right? Exactly. Great. Should we do it now? Let's go and do that. Great. OK, so I'm going to Mixpanel. Um, this is Mixpanel. As from what you said, we're going to settings. Is it project settings? Correct. Yep. Great. And the token um, is this one right here. It seems like it's longer than than what what I expected. So this whole thing, right, looks like almost like twenty digits, almost. Correct. Yep. Great. Okay. So then I'm pulling Framer, and we're going to find that little snippet of the token. Is that here? So. Yep. So we're just replacing this text. So it, it looks like the standard code makes it easy for us to identify by the term to project token, right? Exactly. Yep. All right. So I'm pasting it in there. Boom. Perfect. Happy with that? Yep. Now, essentially, that's been the installation part. The SDK is now installed onto the web page. Well, I haven't hit save yet. Should I hit save and actually launch it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. Okay, so boom, and I'll also publish the site now because that's another step too. Because all of this stuff will be live until you hit publish. Yes, and I always, you know, try to like recommend to test things out now that you've published the site. Just make sure that you can go into the site and you know it is loading and nothing has broken. Right. Um, Let's do that. I'll just quickly pop open the site. Let's see if seems smooth so far. I'll do another quick refresh because it was just a moment ago. Sometimes. Yep, looks fine to me. Great. Perfect. Awesome. Now, I'm coming back to FigJam. Um, now, what we're going to do is yeah. track our first button. So we'll add the tracking code for the first button, um, click on the button, and make sure that we have an event that appears in Mixpanel. Um, before we do that, one more thing that we can do to check. I um, mentioned previously that the SDK automatically tracks page views. Now that we've implemented Mixpanel uh, on the website, technically we should have a page view event after you yeah. refresh uh, the page. So yeah. what we could do is maybe go back onto the Blizzard page, refresh it one more time, uh, just to trigger another event. And then we can go into your Mixpanel project just to double check that we do have that event over there. So here we are. And yep. I'll just hit refresh on the home page. Yes, please. Great. That's done. Head over to Mixpanel. Yep. Let's go into the okay. Mixpanel project. And if you go into the events section uh, and the nav bar on the Great. left hand side. Fingers crossed. Let's see uh, if you wouldn't mind refreshing it quickly. OK. Uh, so when was this triggered four minutes ago? Uh, it looks like maybe page view has not been triggered yet. Okay, let's have a quick look. I just did another publish. Uh, I just moved the code at the top just in case. Yeah. I don't know if that changed anything. Okay, that actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. You yeah, know what? Nice. Let's, let's, let's make this clear to the audience. Um, for those of you guys watching, we just did some troubleshooting. Um, very important, and I've noticed this thing with Framers custom code in the past when we pasted. Uh, meta code pixel to track for ad tracking. Um, always paste what any new codes on the start of the head tag, the new code should be at the top. Uh, for whatever reason, if you paste your new codes at the bottom, it, you know, there might be some kind of bug in Framer until they probably fix it. 
uh, it doesn't seem to work if you paste things at the end, like here. So what you want to do, like I said, is paste at the top instead. And that seems to work. Now, I am concerned. Hopefully, I have to speak to our, um, our paid media person to make sure that he's getting his ad tracking still. But hopefully, well, at least Mixpanel works. So we can continue from here. So Manju said your token should be replaced by token variable at the end of the code. Um, yes, the token, ah, okay, yes. <laughs> missed that, missed that little, little detail. Is the problem. Thanks, Manju. Uh, is that here? Uh, that would be here. Um, let's double, double check the variable that we've got there. Um, it says your token on that one. Yes. So if you scroll up, just want to double check, we've got project token. So yeah. what we have the variable is mixed panel project token. So it's sort yeah. of your token should have mixed panel project token there. Sorry, say again? Uh, instead of your token, um, essentially what we've... This one yep. here? If you delete that, yep. Okay. And then have it as, um, what did we have it as? Mixed panel underscore project underscore token. Okay, great guys. Just another little detail that we missed, and this is normal. Like I'm sure, you know, these these little moving parts you can tend to miss sometimes. But thanks, Manju, for pointing that out. Mix panel underscore project underscore token. Is that correct? That's correct. And just to double check, I believe we need to remove the uh, quotes as well. To remove these quotes, yeah. So let's give that a go. Uh, we'll publish it and um, yeah. Manju just said on the chat room of quotes. Yep. Uh, did I save it? Wait, did I publish it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Didn't... It's good. You saw me publish it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Double checking if I did publish it. Um, yeah, that looks all. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So going back in here. Um, unless I refresh again in. Oh. Right. Tower Hamlets is that us? That should be our event. Um, if you expand that event, we can look at our properties as well. Uh, if you click on the little arrowhead on the left-hand side of page view. Perfect. That will expand your event. So here what you see is all the different properties captured by both Mixed Panel and mm -hmm. itself. So there's three um, essentially tabs. One is all properties. This is everything. If you toggle to um, your properties for me, please, on the middle tab there. So essentially, we are not tracking. You're not tracking anything because this is a uh, default page view event. So in, in general, if you have a track call, your own properties, that's where you'll see the different properties. See them over here. We'll see okay. that the button click. But if you go then mix panel properties, what I want to point out here is because this is an automatic page view, uh, the important bit of information that you can see there is page title, uh, which we know it's blitz it, crush your task in flow state. So just that event now tells us. Um, how many you know views are we getting on that specific page? How many unique users are viewing that page, or how many times a user is viewing that page? So that's the critical bit of information that would allow us to really drill down into our page view events. But also we have things like location, uh, city, country, region. We have um, the domain that the, this event has been triggered on. Um, what else? We've got the time. We've got details on the browser, the browser version, the screen size. Um, initial refer and initial referring domain essentially tells you what was the previous domain the user was on before landing on that page. Assuming maybe the user was on Google, uh, you'll be able to see initial referring domain as Google over there. So knowing that the user viewed Google before arriving onto this particular page. So this is out of the box. There's, as, as you've seen, there's not yeah. much that you need to do. Implement the tracking code, making yeah. sure you have the token and everything there. Uh, once you do that, Mixpanel will track every single page with a page view event, giving you the page title of that. Fantastic. I missed out one point, um, Merv, where you said that we can try to see page view. I'm start, I'm, I can't seem to find that stat here. Where, where do I look for uh, page view counts? Right, so that's when we um, go into our reports. If we want to start drilling further into our events, that's, yeah. you know, we we'll go into one of the mixed reports such as insights to be able to understand the total number of page views. So because well, of the user level I meant, as in like, so this user alone, um, is this based on, okay, this is a, a page view, 
this is the event we're looking at. We're not looking at a specific person. We're looking at correct. So this page, event. yeah, this page, the events page, gives yeah. you a list of um, events that's been ingested in the project in almost real time. Um, and right. the moment you do an action, within a few seconds, you should be able to see that event appear there. And this is for every single user. Now, let's say you want to focus just on yourself because you're running you know, some tests. You want to just see the events that you're doing. Yeah. Under this ID, uh, the value highlighted in blue there is clickable. Right? Click yeah. that. Okay. This takes us uh, to your user. Uh, so this is all me. Exactly. Now, yeah. have your activity feeds, and there you have your event. You'll notice if you go back onto the Blitz web page and go into a different page this time, and uh, yeah. how, how come my, my location is anonymous? Because uh, we were just, we, you know, we we knew from the event we were based in um, Tower Hamlets, UK. That's a great question. This is yeah. because uh, location on the left hand side is based on a people property. At the moment, we're only capturing event properties. So event properties are actions uh, that you would do, and those are tracked with a timestamp. You know exactly when they happened, details about those actions. The difference between an event property and a people property is that the people property is the latest value of that user and always gets updated with the latest value that you sent. Um, to give you some context, Mixpanel stores data in two separate data stores. You have your events data and your user property data uh, or user profile data, and those user properties always get updated with the latest value. And essentially, you can think of it as the latest snapshot of your users, always updating right. with the latest value that you send. So their location, you could be in, in the UK or London, it could show London, then you go to France and Paris, it could show Paris, for example. Right, uh, makes sense. But we'll see it in a minute. We might track a, some user profile properties and we'll be yeah. able to see location getting updated. Uh, but now, yeah, let's go into a few other uh, pages. Mm -hmm. 